everybody, this is Tanya from Tango Business Coaching, and I am following up from my video last week um, that was on strategic planning and kind of strat planning 101, um, talking about strat planning at a really high level. This week, I want to talk about how that high level plan turns into those annual goals that uh, you set out for your team or your department or your individual folks that report to you. And ultimately, that becomes the performance management cycle for individuals. So, so I'm, I've been debating this one for quite a long time, many, many years, about why do most performance management cycles just, just fall flat and in some cases completely fail if we understand the strategic planning cycle so well and if we understand why it's so important, right? So I have a couple of theories on it. So number one, understanding the process and actually doing <laughs> the work are two different things. So in my experience, most organizations do a pretty darn good job of outlining their vision, outlining their mission. Some do a really good job with their values and even their annual planning cycle. But then it falls down once it starts going through, getting cascaded throughout the organization. So somewhere between, you know, after that vice president level, somewhere between director level and down, um, things start falling down, right? So the message of the goals and the connection to the mission and the vision, all of that starts getting diluted and confusion starts happening, you know, as you go further into the organization. And pretty soon goals aren't even written anymore. And if they are, they're somewhat poorly written and employees are left at the end of the day, especially the deeper throughout the organization you go, they're kind of left under like looking at their goals, wondering how that connects to anything really. And sort of an exercise in futility, which is where the frustration comes from. Like, why am I even doing this process? I don't understand um, how these goals relate or, you know, where they're coming from or what's the point. And it just seems like a make work project, right? So I think that's, that's one um, big chunky area. The second one is time. Um, and I don't love using time as an excuse. Um, however, the process of annual planning and writing goals and performance management does require prioritization of time and a, and a good amount of time. It's one of the most important things that a leader can do. And again, in my experience, I found that a lot of leaders don't dedicate the time that they really need to reflect on how goals need to be implemented throughout their department. They see it more as an administrative function rather than a necessary part of the overall strategic plan. So I think that's a second problem. Um, another thing that I've seen is that leaders uh, and or employees who are writing goals over, overly complicate um, goal setting. Sometimes they, you'll see employees with like 20 goals, you know, 10 goals, like a whole lot of goals way too many goals it's overwhelming and it's not sustainable and again back to the first point where like the goals sometimes don't even make sense like they're just written there and you know it's just part of their day-to-day -day job right it's not actually a goal so having an ability to make clear decisions on resourcing and timing that clearly demonstrate advancing the goal toward the mission and our vision is a um, required skill and goal setting. And I think that that is something that doesn't happen very often. Um, a fourth problem that sometimes I see is employees will feel like goals are unfair. Sometimes they're written in a way that optically shows uh, one area of the business um, contributing more value than others, right? And then that creates tension and unfairness in the process. So as a leader, you really have to find how your team connects to the overall vision and mission of the organization and create the value there for them. So those are four ideas that I had. I'm sure there's many, many more to think about, but so what do we do? I guess is the next part of this. Performance management systems have been getting a bad reputation for years and years and years. And again, back to my experience with this, it's not usually the system that's the problem or the tool that you're using that's the problem, but it's how 
the users apply the tool. So I think to simplify this is the best way of handling goal setting and performance management. And I'm going back to SMART goals. So it is tried and true. And again, there are all kinds of versions of SMART out there, but generally speaking, using the SMART framework should help if you actually use it properly. So again, typically leaders don't actually use the full framework. They use parts of it, but not all of it. So SMART, again, I'll, I'll go back and reiterate, it means specific. So is the goal that you're writing specific? Are you really clear what it is that's expected in that goal? Um, what the outcome ought to be? Um, all of the different pieces that need to be really specific around it. Is it action oriented? Uh, so specific is, is this S. M is measurable. So how do you know uh, when this goal is completed? What does success look like with this goal? What are the metrics associated with the completion of this goal or the progress of this goal? Uh, A is attainable and R is realistic. Uh, I like to consider those two hand in hand because they do need to be thought about in the greater context of all of goal setting. Um, so that is a really important one. When we talk about attainable and realistic, a lot of times leaders just think about it in terms of that one goal without thinking about the context of everything else going on around. So what are all the other priorities? What are maybe the support or resources that you are going to require from other departments um, in order to accomplish that goal? Do you have the financial resources? Do you have the people resources in consideration of your day job, the team's day job, internal and external forces? All of those pieces need to be considered to be able to say, is this goal realistic and is this goal attainable? And of course, the T is time bound. So by when are you expecting that this goal uh, will be completed? Or if you're setting up milestones within the goal, by when will those milestones be expected to be completed? So tying a time frame to this is critically important. A good measure on goal setting is somewhere between three to five goals for an individual, depending on the complexity of the goal and everything else going on around, right? So all those other factors that I was talking about earlier. What I like to do when I'm goal setting is I actually like to write them out first I don't play in whatever tool or system um, comes my way I or that we're required to use in the organization. I like to get really clear on what the goal is first and what I'm going to be working on and get them written out in a way that makes sense and really consider that SMART framework first and foremost. Once I'm really comfortable with the goals, then I transfer that into whatever tool, whatever system it is that the organization is using. Oftentimes we do the process the other way around with the tool comes our way. We get the notification from the tool or, or whatever it is, and we get overwhelmed by the system or the tool. The system tool is just meant to capture um, the goal and be a tracking mechanism for you to make it easier later on down the road. Don't let that process overwhelm you or frustrate you um, in the meantime. Go back to the basics. You know, what is goal setting actually about? It's about taking you closer to the vision or mission. It's about getting alignment with your team. It's helping you to um, manage your employees and getting crystal clear on expectations. It is actually truly an amazing process. It's getting clear. It's creating clarity. So just remember that when you're uh, tackling this process as you're and as you're going through it. Um, the whole goal here is to advance you and your organization and your team and to have better conversations. So in our next video, we're going to talk more about how do you prioritize goals? How do you say no to something, which is actually a skill that I think most of us don't do well. We're really good at saying yes and adding goals to the mix uh, back to is it attainable um, and is it realistic? So we're going to talk a little bit more about setting boundaries around that and how to say no. And then in the following video after that, we're going to talk more about the performance management conversation as well. So I hope you found this helpful. Um, 
you know, happy to hear from you. Would love to hear more in the comments. Any questions you have, any feedback you have about what's worked well for you in goal setting um, and ideas. Always looking to learn more myself. So I will see you in the next video. Have a great day, everybody. I will talk to you soon. Bye.